Hey there, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today we have an Akai AP206. This is a direct drive. Um, I believe it is a fully automatic turntable because it has a start uh, switch here and cut. So I'm thinking it's fully automatic. Um, these Akai decks <clears throat> from the late 70s, early 80s are pretty nice. Um, good quality build. Um, I'm pretty sure they made their own stuff. Um, I could be wrong with that. If you know, you can obviously leave me a comment. But uh, I always thought the Akai stuff was a little bit different than everybody else's. And like I mentioned, uh, decent quality, uh, good performance, and uh, always uh, pretty high-tech looks. Now, Akai did go overboard about 1984. They started making some really wacky-looking uh, uh, space-age 80s-style receivers and uh, tape decks uh, that uh, really took a, a nosedive in quality as well. Um, but uh, this stuff here from, uh, you know, the, uh, I'd say the mid-70s to early 80s, 81, 82, that stuff is really good. Um, and that's where I'm pretty sure this one comes from. Uh, the complaint on this one, um, the gentleman, this is a flipper, so he's just uh, dropping it off before he puts it up for sale. But speed is way off and uh, just needs a general service. And check to see that the stylus has some life on it and set it up for sale. So um, as far as I know, it runs okay. Let's uh, give it a quick test before we turn it over. Okay, now let's just see if it is a fully automatic. I'm pretty sure it is. Why else would it have a start switch? Let's go. Maybe it needs to cycle once. The auto returns. Now I could be 100% wrong about the uh, fully automatic on this. And it cuts. Or does it? Yeah, it definitely cuts. Let me pause. I just want to have a quick look at the uh, at Vinyl Engine just to see what kind of features this thing has. See, this is why it's nice to have instruction manuals available on the internet so you can quickly see how to operate a turntable. Uh, even I'm dumb when it comes to stuff like this. So this one is not an auto start. It ha you, What you do is you pull the, the stylus over and it stays in the up position and then you hit the start position and it will descend. It is descending, okay? So it descends on the record, and then if you want to cut, you hit that, and it'll cut the, the record. But it's not auto start. So there you go, that's good to know, eh? Um, so that's working. Um, let's see how, okay, you can't, like I said, once you start it, you have to hit, it's kind of like the Yamaha series where you actually hit the play button after you move the tone arm over. Queuing works. It's nice and slow, so that's good. We're going to have to fix that. I like when I don't have to fix things. I like when I just have to service them. So let's go up. And uh, over here is our pitch controls and speed selector switch. And I'm just looking at... Uh, oh, it's way off. And Oh, <laughs> well, so we found our first problem. These barely turn. Wow, they are super tight. And the speed is all over the place. It's like, so we know that uh, our pitch controls are, let's see, we got 45 here. Oh, 45 is just as bad. 45 is usually worse because you don't use 45 as much. 
really, really tight. You know, and that's the thing about pitch controls. People don't use them. You know, I, I'm almost to the point now where, you know, set it underneath, set it and forget it type of thing and just leave it alone, right? But I understand why they're there because let's say, you know, this particular cartridge, what is it? Uh, looks like a Stanton. It tracks at, let's say, two grams, right? And then later on, you buy something new that tracks at 1.5. Well, all of a sudden, you're putting 0.5 fewer grams onto the uh, record surface. So that 0.5 grams will change the speed ever so slightly, right? So that's why the pitch controls come into play. Um, but if you have a high torque motor, then they're really not necessary, right? So I thought I heard a little bit of platter scrapage while I was talking there. Could be wrong. We'll check that out later. Okay, so um, we definitely know we have some dirty pitch controls. The motor's spinning well, but uh, I'm sure it's never been serviced. Yeah, this platter shouldn't be touching the plinth like that. Do you see this here? I can push down on both sides. Let's just pull that off quickly. Have a look. Oh, dog's upset. I'm not sure if it's the motor or the platter. There's a little bit of play here, but not a lot. So here's here's that auto start function. Um, so this one, so when you're in this position and you hit start, it'll trip that, move it over to the half position here, right? So that's in the up position. And then when you hit it again, this tells it to drop the tone arm. So that's why you've got two here. And then once more, Start the auto return and send her back. Interesting. I uh, I just tightened up these uh, several screws here. I think they hold this motor plate up. So I think I'm getting uh, um, I've moved the platter up just a little bit off the uh, off the plinth here. I'm not getting that scraping anymore. But that was kind of weird. Let's see what we got here for cartridge. I said it was a Stanton, but. Yeah, it's a Stanton 500. Oh, look at the dirt on that. Look, at, it's, it's like, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's fuzzy. So this gentleman really hopes there's some uh, needle left. You know, these guys don't pay a lot for these turntables. And then uh, they want to flip them for some, you know, profit, whatever. And um, the last thing I want to do is put a cartridge or a stylus on it. So, okay, let's unplug it. Put our uh, dust cover back on. And we'll go about having a peek underneath. And there goes the 45 adapter. Ooh, lots of screws. You know what we do when we got lots of screws? We'll be right back. Okay, we got all our screws out. I have to say, I like a nice solid base on a turntable. I'm not a huge fan of cardboard bases. They have a tendency to warp over time. Uh, this will remain solid throughout its life. And it's nicely reinforced, too. There's a little bit of soot here. I wonder what that's from. Ooh. That's right where the capacitors are, is it not? No, it's in this area. Could be... Uh, Someone tried to spray some uh, contact cleaner within the uh, speed pots from the top, maybe made a mess. We'll have to have a look at that, make sure everything's good. Because we're going to redo these because they are horribly frozen. Quite a few controls on the motor board here. Um, probably for voltage and so forth. 
one, two, these are painted, they don't want to be touched. One, two, three, four, five, six on the motor board. I'm not going to mess with that because we've got, uh, we did have some travel within the pitch control, so I don't think we'll need to adjust speed yet. Um, motors here. Here's our uh, main micro switch to turn the motor on and off. All metal construction everywhere, except for a couple of plastic pieces here. So this is a uh, very durable, long lasting turntable. Um, looks like either MDM, MDF or uh, particle board construction. So uh, not a lot of plastic here other than the base. All right, so let's take care of these pitch controls first because they were obviously the major problem here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Right there, okay. These probably gonna need uh, a couple treatments just because they're so stiff. Very, very stiff. They will loosen up over time once the uh, contact cleaner does its thing. And this contact cleaner has a lubricant in it as well. It is loosening up. I'm just gonna let that sit for a little while and uh, work its way in. Uh, speed switch, doesn't look like there's any access. And it's screwed in from the top, looks like. Okay, we'll hit that, we'll get that next. Let's, uh, let's work on this motor. Looks like one, two, three, four screws for the motor. Obviously never removed before. So the manufacturer of this motor is Japan Servo. I'm going to have to cut this. There we go. So, classic looking direct drive motor. Spins pretty good, I have to say. Considering it has, you know, 50 year old oil. Oh, it's got a big ball bearing on it. There is, there is oil. So there's no lack of lubrication there. That's, that's good to see. And it's still viscous. So that's good. So we just set that aside. Oops, I bumped you there. Sorry. We'll set that aside and we'll do our usual cleaning here. Yeah, a bit dirty, I gotta say. But like I said, it uh, was still spinning pretty nice. And um, there was oil in there, which is nice to see. Because a lot of times I open these motors up and they are dry. So I just like to sop up the majority of the oil before I go in there with alcohol.
Okay, that's nice and clean. Now we'll clean our spindle. Paper towel, a little bit of alcohol. And just give that a wipe. Oh, there goes the ball bearing. Oh, don't roll away. So we're going to clean where the ball bearing sits. Let's get in there a little bit. Let's get that oil out of there. All right, and we'll grab our electric motor oil. And we'll put a drop right here. Just like that. Grab our ball bearing. Make sure it's spinning nice. Certainly is. Let's put a drop on the spindle here. And two or three drops down the well. And uh, put that in and let her drop down. If you've overfilled your bearing well, it will take a few moments for this to come down, but it will. What it's doing right now is it's pushing the air out of the bearing well. And uh, what you don't want to do is don't spin it. When you spin it, it seems to stop. The uh, best thing to do is just leave it alone and let it come down naturally. It will come down. Okay. And then uh, what you can do in the meantime is you can clean controls or check your capacitors. Um, just having a quick peek on this board. Let's, uh, oh, you guys can see that. These caps look like they're all Nippon Chemicon, which are high quality caps. Um, if this was my table, would I change these capacitors? I would say probably. Uh, you know, they are old. There's no doubt about it. And if you saw my video on the last turntable I did, the Sansui, I, I changed caps just because I wasn't getting power, but uh, that turned out to be a, a, an on-off switch of all things. Um, but yeah, if you have a situation like this, especially if your speed, you can't dial in your speed, you might want to look at uh, swapping out your electrolytics, okay? Now, in this job, I'm pretty sure the gentleman does not want to spend a penny more than he has to. Like I said, this is a flipper. So we've got decent speed, so we're not touching the, uh, the electrolytic caps here. We're going to check to make sure we've got decent speed, and we're going to carry on just with a basic, basic service. Let's see how our speed pots are doing here. Oh, wow. There they go. They are great now. There they are right there in the bottom of your screen. Ah, turning lovely. It just takes a couple minutes for that uh, contact cleaner to go in there and just remove the gunk. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. And our motor is coming down. Um, one thing about electrolytic caps, just so you know, um, if you look on the board here, these are light blue Sanyo caps, okay? These are notorious for failure, okay? Now, the, the Nippon Chemicons, they're going to be good. I Just from personal experience, I haven't seen these fail in, um, in equipment like this. You know, there's no bulging at all. Uh, but these, you'll pull these, and these are horrible. So, what am I thinking here? I'm thinking, you know, for long-term reliability, I'm going to want to get these out. So, 
um, for two capacitors. Uh, I don't think I'm going to piss off the owner that much. Um, it's just that I have experience with these Sanyo caps and they are horrible. So I am going to pause. I'm going to pull out these caps and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll throw them on the uh, uh, component tester and we'll see how they measure. Uh, so let me get this board out of here. We'll yank these caps and I'll be right back. Got the uh, board removed. It's uh, just held in with some uh, standoffs here. You have to compress a little uh, piece of plastic and then they pop off. Um, here's the first of the Sanyo caps. Uh, it's a uh, polarized electrolytic. It's rated at 2.2 uh, microfarad 16. You don't see those kind of values anymore. Uh, 2.250. Let's uh, see what kind of uh, numbers it, uh, it gives us here in the tester. I know there's glare occasionally on these. All right, so it's coming in at 2.9 uh, microfarads. E well, that's weird. I don't know why my tester went again. And the ESR was 5. It probably is okay for a 2.2. Uh-oh. Look, my battery's getting low here. We're going to change it anyway. 2.2. Uh, so, yeah, you pretty much uh, can only get 2.250s these days. So we'll put a nice uh, Rubicon in there. Place that one. I'm going to pull the other one, which looks uh, a little bit smaller. What is that? It's a 0.47. So we'll pull that and we'll measure that too. Here's our... Uh, 0.47 microfarad. Oh, okay, this is bad. So it's 694 nanofarad. That's uh, off, and an ESR of 10. So this one shot. So whenever you see these, so they look like this. They say Sanyo on them. They're actually manufactured by Sanyo. They're blue. Um, 85 degree. If you see these in your vintage equipment, yank them out. Okay, not good caps. So we need a 0.47 microfarad. Okay, put the board back. Put our motor back. I'm not going to put that twist tie or cable clamp back on there. That's fine. Motor screws. Tighten them in a crisscross pattern, kind of like you're putting on the lug nuts on your tires. And I will say this one is done.
Um, I'm not going to touch anything else. Like I said, this is a quick and uh, dirty service here. We will put the base back on, flip it over, we'll clean the stylus, and we'll give it a listening test. Before we do anything else here, we have to clean this stylus. It's absolutely gross. It's got the fuzzies. Uh, we're going to use alcohol on this one because it's that bad. And we'll see if we have any diamond left. Hmm, you can see a little bit there. Okay, consider that clean. I'm just going to check it under my uh, magnifying glass here. There's some diamond left. Hopefully there's enough so, you know, it makes noise. Like I said, I'm not here to judge. This gentleman's going to sell this. Uh, I'm just going to quickly set up this arm. Okay, there's balance. I'll just pop on a couple grams for now. I don't know what the rating is for this cartridge. I'll look at it up afterwards. And uh, we'll hook up some audio cables. Uh, looks like the ground's been hacked off. Okay. Let's turn on our amplifier, see if we got any hum and sound. Let's see if you turn up the volume. No ground noise whatsoever, which I like, no hum. Okay, quickly, check our speed here. Everybody's favorite record. A little bit of motor turn on sound. is excellent and the uh, stereo imaging is good. I'm going to speed up to 45, set the speed. Both pots are really nice and stable. Back down to 33. Let's go check our cut. Good. We'll do a start as well. Nice slow drop. Cueing is nice. We'll just uh, put it to the end there and see how it all returns. Excellent. Well, that's it. That's the Akai AP206. Pretty nice deck. Uh, it's, it's like a 
middle of the line for its era. Um, it's uh, not, like I mentioned, 100% automatic. It's uh, semi-automatic with a start button, which is kind of unnecessary, but whatever. Um, so the major problem with this one was obviously pitch. These were completely seized and frozen and we had horrible speed. Now we're solid. Um, and uh, change out a couple of these bad, nasty Sanyo light blue capacitors. If you have these on any piece of equipment, get rid of them. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in again, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.